Hey guys, what's up? It is April the 5th, 2016, and this is another with these hands. I don't have any finished objects to show you guys. I have three works in progress and some spinning. I have a lot of spinning to show you guys. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. So, since I got three works in progress, I'm going to get it out of the way first and get on to the spinning. Okay? Uh, I did like a, another partial row. <laughs> I think I might, I'm not losing my Viral Child Mojo. It's just that I've been on a, my spinning kick. So, but I did get this one started using the ice yarn that Ann sent me. And, um, But yeah, and another reason why I haven't done any work on this is because I've been knitting on my husband's scarf during my lunch breaks. And so I'll show you guys the progress of that. Um, let me pull this so I don't lose any stitches. Okay, so this is what's left of the Jane C. Brett Marble Chunky. I don't have the ball band anymore, so I don't know which colorway it is, but I've shown it in previous videos. And this is the yarn, the pattern. The um, pattern I'm using is um, Stephanie Pearl McPhee, the Yarn Harlot. It's her one row hand spun pattern, but it, it works up really nice with this Jane C. Um, Brett Marble Chunky, and this scarf is for my husband. And uh, yeah, so I'm really, really enjoying knitting this. Uh, I'm using size 13, my uh, knit pick, whatever they call them. <laughs> As usual, you guys make me yarn. So, I mean, somebody out there was yarning to get me yarn because it's contagious, right? So, yeah. So, that's project number two, which is my most active project um, because I, I work on this anytime I'm in the car going somewhere or when I'm at work on my lunch break and stuff. And the last thing, which I haven't touched, is my socks. Well, not for me, they're for my husband. I haven't touched these in a while because I want to finish that scarf. And I do not knit as fast as I crochet. And I simply haven't been knitting as much anyway because I've been on a spin kick. So, my portable spinning. We'll start with the portable spinning. I'm still working on the bamboo that I dyed. And there we go. So, I'm still spinning on that. And uh, I keep it in my little wrist distaff that I made. It's basically just a little bag. You put a um, how much you want to call it? A strap on it, and it hangs from your wrist, and so that keeps your hands free, keeps your fiber protected somewhere safe. And uh, and keeps your fiber out your way, nice and uh, neat and protected. And it just hangs from your wrist and you spin it. It's, it's that simple. So um, I came up with this idea several years ago when I was on a bus. We were going to Maryland. We were coming back from Maryland Ship and Wool, or we were going to Maryland Ship and Wool. We were going to Maryland Ship and Wool. And I was on a bus full of a bunch of uh, hormonal older women. And they kept opening the windows of the bus, and I was spinning alpaca, and you know how flowery alpaca is, and so it got frustrating. So I had one bought one ball of a blue um, cotton acrylic blend with me, and so I whipped up a little pouch to stuff my fiber into, so that I could spin without it blowing all over the place. And so on the way back home, there was a lady there who had bought her first drop spin. Of course, she had been watching me spin, and I didn't know it. 
And so I gave her the pouch. And I've made me several more, and I've made some and sold some and stuff like that, you know, for new spinners and giving them away for new spinners. Um, just so they would be less frustrated. So, yeah. Um, spinning. I got a lot of finished. All those bobbins that I have filled up and were resting, all that's been plied. And I, I actually, as part of my New Year's thing of being more organized, as soon as I plied it, I skeined it, I, I, I counted the yardage on it, and I put it and I tagged it. So that now I can go and wash it and I won't have any problems with it. Uh. So sorry. <laughs> So, this is the Lorna's Laces that I got from the estate sale. It was 10 ounces. And I got two full bobbins and a partial bobbin. And it is gorgeous, if I do say so myself. And it is beautiful. I wish you guys could see the colors as they truly are. But it's gorgeous. Um... One skein is 307. This one is 378 yards. This one is 389 yards. And then this one was 222 yards. Okay? Just very, very pleased with that spin. And it was a domestic wool blend. But it spun, spun and plied up a lot like uh, Sheep Share Studio fibers that I've gotten before. Um, so, yeah, it's just very, very nice. Very nice spin. All right, so the other one was some of the other ones, rather, because it have 10 bobbins, so go figure. This was the Romney wool that I dyed in gray, and it's a three-ply, and I got 290 yards out of that. And uh, out of that, it was like a 3.8-ounce braid. So it came out pretty good, too. Let's do that in that person. So that was that one. And this is uh, some merino from Winswet Farms, and it's uh, reds, oranges, and yellows. You know, it's coming out like a browns and stuff. Um, there's, you can kind of see it there. But this was uh, 51 yards, three ply. And I spun this trying to spin bulky yarn. Um, thick yarn on my Vesper and uh, I got tired of the colors it was, so I just stopped so this has been actually sitting on the bobbin on my Vesper probably since I don't know May or June of last year so that's done and so next we have this is so freaking soft this is the mystery wool that was in that bag that my friend gave me. And I got 280 yards of three ply. All of these are three plies. I prefer three plies because it's a rounder yarn. I do do two plies sometimes if I'm spinning like some alpaca or something I'm going to spin for, for a lace, for a nice flat lace. And uh, so this one is. Homestead Wool and Gift Farm. This was from Lily. This is Shetland Fiber from Lily. It was uh, how many ounces was it? I think it was a seven ounces, I believe, that I purchased, and I got a three ply, four hundred and twenty-two yards out of that, and came out really nice, really nice. I knew that that was a something on it. But I still haven't washed it yet. So it does have like some little bit of grass and stuff. So those little dark areas that you see is actually like little bits and pieces of veggie matter just stuck in there. 
So it still has to be washed. Um, this came out a lot softer than what I was expecting. This one is Homestead Wool and Gift Fiber. This is Pixel Romney and Dalai Lama's Fiber. It was a four ounces, and I got it's a three ply, and I got 220 yards out of that. And um, it has a halo. And that's because of the the llama fiber. So you can see the halo. And next we have, and it has to be washed, and it has to be, um, this is BFL, and it, it has some twist in it, um, but I didn't, I didn't spin it, it's this, I think I left it on the bobbin too long, and it started taking the shape of the bobbin, but, um, here, I'm gonna do this, because once it gets washed, this twist just pretty much disappeared and it'll balance out real easy. I'll just wash it and hang it under tension and that'll get rid of the, that, that twist. But I'll let you guys look at that. This is the BFL 3 ply. The fiber was some fiber I won online on Instagram. It was from Quillen Fiber Arts. And I got 280 plus yards. And the name of the colorway was Owls. That's the name of the colorway. So it just needs to be washed and um, wrapped a couple of times to distribute that twist. And uh, it'll be good. It'll be fine. It'll be nice and balanced. And then the last spin implied is this Arizona Blend 2015 4 ounces grays. And it, um, this is from my friend Cheryl Waddell. And it's Sonoran Desert Dyed Fibers and Waddell Wools, I believe. But it's all grays, warm grays. It's very nice, very squishy, very soft. So, and so the last spin is I started spinning this yesterday. It was the last four ounces I have of Cheryl's fiber, and this is also the Arizona Grays. It'll look, it'll look just like this one. Very nice oatmeal, oatmealy grays, warm grays. Um, once I apply that up. There you go. Spoon, very nice, very fast spin. Beautiful fiber, soft bounces. It's just a, a beautiful, beautiful blend. And I'm kind of sad because I only had purchased two, four ounces of it. I know I can get more, but I got so much of my own stuff I need to spin. So, yeah. So, my next spin is. This is Homestead, I know it's from Homestead Wool and Gift Farm. And it's Cosmos Lincoln X Roving, it's two ounces. So that's the next spin. And it's just a little, this won't take long to spin at all. But it's going to probably spin up to be a um, finger and weight. Because it's a little bit that I did spin already is spinning up towards a nice fingering with yarn. So this will probably be finished. I'll probably finish spinning this before I go to bed tonight. So my my next spin after that will be I'll be getting into some color. So I'm getting into now some of my purchased purchased um, fiber like uh, the Malabrigo. Merinos, um, the Azula yarns, the Azula fibers that I have in here. Um, let me see. Well, I do have some Merinos from Winswept Farms. I, I might, 
It's a real pretty brown, chocolate brown. Um, I might spin it first just to save the, the colored fibers. Well, the thing about it is this, this is probably 10 to 12 ounces. And this will probably be two full bobbins, maybe two, maybe two and a half. So I have 10 bobbins, so I got, that leaves me eight bobbins. Yeah, because this one's full. So that leaves me eight bobbins, plus the one I'm working on now, um, to spin. So this will probably be my, actually be my first spin. And then I'll get into my dye fibers because I got like one, two, three, three Malabrigos and four Anzuma. Um, then I have some natural, some natural fibers. And I have some acrylics too that I'm going to be working on. So yeah, I'll probably do the, the natural and that one first, then get into my dye stuff. Like this is the big twist the huge from loops and threads, 55% polyester and 45% acrylic. And um, I got two of these to spin. Uh, one in um, these the turquoise and browns. And then the other one is in these uh, naturals like grays and blacks and charcoals and stuff. So I got two of those to spin because, hey. It was on sale, it was cheap, it's fiber, even though they're trying to sell it like yarn, and it's spinnable because I've gotten some similar to this before. That was a line brand product, I believe. And I spun it up in amazing, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Um, so yeah, so that's what is planned anyway. And uh this is the bag of dyed fiber that is in there. And this is Trillium's Jacob and Trillium and Trouble's Jacob and Trillium is a Jacob and Trouble is a Jacob Cordell cross. And it's eight ounces of roving it. And this is also from Homestead Wool and Gift Farm. So yeah, I'll do the Homestead one next actually. And then I'll do the Merino because it's a commercial Merino I got from Winswept Farms. And then I'll move into the, the dye fibers. So my box is getting considering how high it was piled up before it's, it's doing I'm doing pretty good um I've spun already spun about three pounds of fiber this year uh, oh I forgot I finished spinning the finish but this is like I hasn't been finished I finished and it was on a bad bobbin one of my bobbins is not playing nice um so it was like a lot kinky. This is a lot twistier than what I'm, I'm used to because I had to keep changing my tension and to get that bobbin to even spin. So I've, I'm I'm going to probably have to take that bobbin out of rotation and order a couple more bobbins from from um, um, Spinolution for the Queen Bee. So this is one. Of, this is one of my old bobbins from um, when it was just the bee, nice Queen Bee. And they changed the bobbin shape. So the, the old bobbins are like this. And the new bobbins are like this. So, yeah. So I got, I still got three old bobbins. Because before this became a queen bee, this this bobbin, you could spin lace, silk lace on this bobbin like nobody's business. So I marked it down so I would know which bobbin to use when I wanted to spin lace. Silk, silk or bamboo lace. Um... But this, these bobbins aren't do not do well with the spinning wheel anymore. Um, so yeah, I might send them back to get um, the newer shape bobbins. Maybe they'll give me a discount, or maybe they just change the ends on. So it'll be cheaper. Who knows? We'll see. But um. That is all that I have for you guys today. I, uh, oh, I, I did. My husband, we went to Ollie's. There's an Ollie's here. And they were having a sale. 
And so I, they had some um, line brand discontinued yarns in there on sale. And I did get some. They were like $2 a ball. So I got some. It's back there in the bag. Uh, to do some stuff for Edmark Foundation because I'm, I have some hats and stuff. The stack is starting to grow. So I want to use um, those cheaper wools to, to make those things. It's, and it's colors that kids will like, fun colors, but stuff that I know I wouldn't want. And so, yeah. So that's some of the things I plan on doing um, soon. Uh, I don't have any drawing to show you guys um, today. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got going on. And, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a comic convention that I went to. It's local. But I got my mermaid, my, my merman pug, the Norfolk Murdog, Merpug, and it's made by Shelly W, it's S-H-L-I-I, Shelly.com, www.shelly, oh, I don't know what it says, too small, there you go. Shelly.com. She and my daughter, they were beside, their booths were beside each other. Well, technically, I, I probably, I do have. Oh, yeah. And I went to Baba's and the Cascade. Her, Heather's was on, I got a skein, two skeins of uh, the Cascade Heather's for the, the cake. Kyle pattern that I'm doing. The Magnolia Kyle. Oh. So I got the yarn for the pattern. Okay. And this is a project. This is something for me. For me, children of mine, for me, for mamas, mamas, my child's mama. <laughs> so, and so my friend Roz, who is the owner of Baba, Roz was like, it's a wonder that I ever see you in my store to buy anything. And it's different when you buy stuff for yourself for projects that you want to do versus yarn you already have that people gave you. So it's like I have to support my local yarn store. And then I also, like, you know, it's different. I mean, I got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I got sixteen skeins of hand spun yarn over the last couple of months. Well, actually, it's more than sixteen. It's um, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So it's like twenty skeins of hand spun yarn over the last couple of months that I spun but that doesn't count because I made that myself and I'm not going to use it so it is what it is you know I love spinning I love spinning and it would be nice if people would buy more of my hand spun so then I would have a reason to spin I mean I seriously I have a freaking bazillion dollar tub back there overflowing it's the size have warped and buckled is so full of hand spun yarn. And so now I have 20 more skeins to add to it. So, yeah. It is what it is. Uh, my main thing is I, my Etsy is up. I do have some items in the Etsy store for sale. Uh, so I did get that done. And now that I am labeling things like I'm supposed to, before I, so I can go ahead and wash them I'll, sh I'll be able to let them dry and then get better pictures now that it's on the screen and hopefully get to a point where you know as soon as they're dry I take a picture I put it up on Etsy and so hopefully they can start picking up there for me um, I'm going to post a link to for you guys and, um, my daughter was invited to a 
I don't know if it's a Comic Con or some type of crafters convention down in Florida. Uh, but she's raising money uh, to help pay for that trip down there. If you guys have seen my videos, you've seen the little trinkets that she makes and little foods that she makes. And um, she's actually started converting some of these into stitch markers for for people who, who want them as stitch markers. Like, see this little bonbon? I'm, my spinning wheel's down here, so that's why I'm so far away from the screen. Alright, let me see. get it to focus there we go all right so so this is like a little chocolate bonbon with a bite missing on it and This is like a little frap that she did. There you go. And she all she does she has like these little taco ones and these little burrito ones and chocolate chip cookies and cookie cats from Steven's Universe and I mean, they're just freaking awesome. I love them. Love them. And, um, yeah. So, I'll put a link to the GoFundMe if you guys are interested in helping her um, with her trip uh, down there. And she's on Facebook as BMO Stock. And that's B E E M O S T A. HP, I think. Let me look just to make sure. But I'll put a link to her stuff for you guys um, as well. And um, and if you can help her, I would really appreciate it. I mean, my daughter's a very talented artist, and you know, and and I would like for her to be able to do the things that I wish I could have done with my art, with with drawing and things like that. Um, I always, I wanted to make sure that she had those opportunities that I didn't have because, you know, some people don't realize sometimes that, that, that when they're negative about things, it kills your dreams. It kills your dreams. It, it kills your desire to do certain things. And, and it kind of confuses you as you're growing up. Um... The things that you want to do, you can't do because it's not approved of by the powers that be in your in your life. And so you just trudge on, trudge on doing the status quo when and, and you're not happy. And so these things lead to all kinds of things. It leads to depression. It leads to just being sour and mad at the world. Because you're not, you're being suppressed. You're not being allowed to express your artistic side. Or you're not allowed to um, culture those things that make you happy, that bring you joy, that you enjoy doing. And so you end up just falling into step with the rest of the world. And you're unhappy and you're depressed. And, and you just, you know, you, you, but then you, I want to make sure that my children had opportunities I didn't have. If they had an interest or expressed an interest in art, music, or whatever, I wanted to give them the opportunity to at least try. And she has excelled with her art. So if you guys can help, please help her out. Um, and, and any encouragement also would be is awesome because encouragement, especially from strangers, is, is just is, is more just is more motivating to an artistic person than it is than you get it from your friends and family. 
Um, so I really appreciate you know anything you guys can do to help. So I'm gonna post her information down here, and um, I'll probably also put a link so you guys can help her out. Um, and speaking of which, this is her right here. So come here, artistic child. I'm doing my video. So this is Iman. This is my artist daughter. Right there. Her nickname is Pretty. <laughs> but um, but that's that's her. Yeah. Yarn is fifty percent off that haircut package. Is it? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Enabler. <laughs> so. So yeah, so I'll post a link and you guys can check her out. And if you can help and spread the word, I really appreciate it. All right, take care.